السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Those of us that are in the back can come to the front and those of us that are here in the main hall can come a little closer and those of us in the foyer, those of us in, the, in that entrance there, the front entrance or the courtyard are kindly requested to come inside. And those who are here to register, you're not going to be able to register until 9 o'clock anyway, so you may as well join us for now. Once this talk is over, inshallah, for those of you who don't know, this is how it goes. So we've got the talk now. We're going to be here together for the next 35, 40 minutes or so. And then inshallah, after this, we will have the basketball registration for tomorrow's tournament for those who have already signed up online. So we're going to have the registration open for them after this talk. And we will also issue tickets to everyone for the raffle for, I don't know if anybody else heard this yet or not, but for the raffle for the tomorrow's uh, Leafs versus Blues game. So you're going to go to a brother that you're going to see here, very handsome. Uh, he's not here right now. I think he just stepped outside. I'm not sure. But brother Nadim is his name. He's right there. He's in the office. No, that's not him. Um, nonetheless, you're going to ask for Brother Nadim. He's going to give you a ticket, and that's going to be your ticket for the raffle to the Leafs game tomorrow. There are five tickets that are being given away. So, again, we're going to have the talk now, and then after that, we're going to have the registration, and we're going to have the tickets, the raffle. But at the same time, we are going to have dinner. So everybody's expected to join us for dinner as well. While everybody's having dinner... The scholars, who hopefully have not shown up until now, I just saw two, but um, the scholars will show up while we're having, well, while everybody else is having dinner, they're going to play their game. That all-star game was scheduled for tonight. This way we'll be able to save some time, and once we finish playing the game in the gym, then thereafter we finish having dinner, then inshallah we can continue with an open gym tonight. The basketball tournament does not start until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. For those of you who emailed us telling us you didn't know what the schedule was like, it went viral like a month ago. So yeah, hopefully you know what the schedule is like. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, it starts. The play-in tournament starts 8 in the morning. You've got three games to hopefully prove your game. And if you don't, then it was nice. Nonetheless, so keep this in mind. Any other questions before we get the ball rolling? No? So everybody understands what the agenda or the program looks like. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. One day, inshallah. Slowly, soon, soon. Oh, yes, a question. A question that many people ask. Why is there no sleepover tonight? I'll give you the answer. Because the last time there was a sleepover, I think I told you guys this in the second program that we had on New Year's Eve. I requested, I think it was like up to eight brothers, okay? Eight brothers to join us on that night, join us in the program, exclusively to help me put the kids to sleep. So those brothers came. They showed up. May Allah bless them. They had a more fun time than a lot of the other people that didn't even play. No problem. And when the time to sleep came, they came to me. They said, Brother Shway, where are we going to sleep? I said, what are you talking about? I didn't call you for this. I asked you to help me put the other... I don't know how many people that were here to sleep. And you're asking me where you're going to sleep? So it became really, really tough to put, I mean, with all due respect to those of you that are disciplined, but to put a lot of you to sleep is not a one-man task. And I was left alone. Illa wahid. There was one person with me. And he's going to help me with the registration later on tonight as well. May Allah bless him immensely. But it was tough. That Christmas Eve night was tough. So we didn't have it in New Year's Eve and we didn't have it now. But hopefully in the future we can have it again. Inshallah. So now we're going to start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنة إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله عز وجل اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون صدق الله العظيم my respected brothers and elders, ulama, youngsters and friends, and I don't know how and where people might just be listening online or something else. You know, frankly, we've heard a lot of talks, and I've probably said this before, you can hear better talks elsewhere as well. But sometimes I might, or those that you listen to, it might seem like they're coming down your throat very harshly, but in reality, we need that check every once in a while. It's nice. You know, somebody's going to tell me after this talk is done, Brother Nadim, can you make the lights a little dim? So, Jazakallah khair. So, some brothers might ask later on, they might be like, Brother, you know, they're, they're youth, you know, they're in college, they're in high school, and you're going to talk to, the, talk to them about Jahannam? That's exactly what I'm going to talk about tonight. Yeah, because very frankly, I need it. And I think all of us need it. Those of us who don't think they need it, I'm sorry, you need it the most. Yeah, we all need it. The time that we spend in this world is extremely crucial, integral, and important. No matter how long we spend in this world, Compared to that which lies beyond and above, it's actually almost tantamount to nothing. No matter if you live a hundred years, the last fan of a certain team just died yesterday at the age of 106. No matter how long you live, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, مَنْ عَاشَ أَلْفًا وَأَلْفَيْنِ إِنَّهُ لَبُدَّ مِنْ يَوْمٍ يَسِيرُ فِيهِ إِلَى الْقَبْرِ Live for a thousand years if you'd like. Live for two thousand years. But whatever period of time we spend in this world, in comparison to that which is going to happen, and it's inevitable, and it's real, it's actually almost nothing. It is something, absolutely, and it's of something that's very important. But compared to that, it's almost nothing in regards to the length of time. After this, we go inside of the grave. After the grave, we're going to be made to stand in front of Allah. 50,000 years is the length of the day of Qiyamah alone. So one question that everybody across the globe is going to be asked on that day, You know what's awesome? Is all of these hufal sitting in the front row seats, you know this, you've memorized this, now try to ponder over this too. So this dialogue or this discussion, conversation is going to take place. And what's the question? كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ How long did you live in this world in terms of years? So when we used to be in boarding school, we used to jump or hop the fence and go to the Deer Creek golf course next door, and we used to skate in the winter. We did it over the weekend. Come Monday morning, every one of us was in trouble. No problem. The teacher, I can't say his name, he's very senior and honored. He used to call us into the office. He used to ask, okay, you guys are in trouble. How long did you go for? One of them used to say, I went for six hours. We went for six hours. He said, no, we didn't go for six hours. We went for four hours. The other one says, no, what are you guys talking about? We only went for two. And the last one's going to come along and say, you guys are all confused. We only went for one hour. Why are you guys telling the teacher we went for a sake? This is something like that which is going to happen on the day of Qiyamah before Allah. What's going to happen? So how long did you guys live? How long did you guys spend in this world? So there's different categories of people that are going to provide the answer. One of them is going to come along. They're going to, they're going to say, tuna baynahum illa bithtum illa ashra. You know how long we lived in this world? And this is the highest that we're going. It's not going to get anything longer than this. I think we lived in this world, says the first group of people, for a period of 10 days. What? Yeah, the 10 days. And this is the longest. There's nobody that's going to tell you anything more than this on the day of Qiyamah when this discussion takes place. And which category of these categories do we belong to? We don't know. But those who are the most delusional and the most deceived and the most beguiled by the 
by the riches and the pomp and glamour of, glamour of this world will perhaps think they've lived here for, I don't know, was it the shortest or the longest time? This first category of people replied, we lived here for 10 days. Another group is going to interject and say, what are you talking about 10 days? Yet, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ إِذْ يَقُولُوا أَمْثَلُهُمْ طَرِيقَةً إِنْ لَبِثْتُمْ إِلَّا يَوْمَا What are you talking about 10 days? It was a single day. We know exactly how long we were in this world. It was one day that we spent, but you lived for a hundred years. I mean, you lived like you were going to live for a, e eternity, like it was never going to come to an end. But the reality is starting to check in because everything that is we're made to witness before our eyes on the day of judgment, it's already starting to strike. And all of a sudden, your numbers have become like, uh oh, we just went for a life of from a life of one hundred years of luxury to one day. But yet another group comes along and they interject and say, No, what are y'all talking about? It wasn't even a full day, man. It was just it was just a morning or an evening. We lived Allah says this in the Quran. This is not a weak hadith, my friends. This is Allah's words from the book of Allah. How long do we stay? It was, I think it was a morning. No, I think it was just one evening, but it was something like that. It wasn't anything more than that. That's, that's the bottom line. That's for sure. And yet a fourth group comes along and they say, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ يُقْسِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ مَا لَبِثُوا غَيْرَ سَاعَةِ What are you talking about? A morning? A whole morning? Or a whole evening? It was a sa'a. The ulama interpreted this mean one hour? We lived in this world for an hour. So the period of time that we have in this world, and don't be deceived, my young friend, thinking that, you know, I still got 40 or 50, I got 60 years to go, and until finally, once I get a white beard, is when I'm going to turn back to Allah. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. That's a deception. We need to get out of this. This thinking, I'm so sorry to tell you, is delusional. This is not how the believer lives and thinks and works and toils and makes an effort. No, every single day, minute, second counts in the life of the believer. For knowing very well that at any moment in time, death is inevitable, I might just go and before I go, I need something with which I need to go. I need, my, my resources can't deplete, my provisions can't be exhausted, I don't want to go broke. You know, we've been on little journeys. We've been, how much money you bring with you? You brought $200. What's wrong with you? You brought $200. We went to like this place. You brought $200. You're out of your mind. Why did you even come for $200? I was offered to go to Dubai recently. And then, subhanAllah, I was very close to going. And, and the very close friend of mine that's actually going on this trip is here. So nonetheless, they're going to go. And I'm not going to get to go. And I felt bad that I can't go. For whatever reasons, I can't go. Later on, when I found out they're going to be staying in this place on, you know, those islands that almost look fake in a villa. Yeah, 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 that one. And they're going to be staying there where you pay like $2,510 a night. Are you all right? $2,510 a night. Hey, <laughs> there. this is all a deception. I mean, I hope they have fun. I'm just jealous I didn't get to go. I hope they have fun. But wallahi, the reality is going to check in on that day. Everybody's asleep. They're all in their graves. And Allah decrees, or Allah has ordered rather, that everybody get up from this sleep that you've been in for the longest time. They're going to get up. Ya waylana, man ba'athana min marqadina. Yo, what's going on? Who woke us up from this sleep? You know this? Chapter 36, Surah Yasin. We read it every morning, and I hope we do. I really hope we do, man. We've got time for everything else. Read this. Read Surah Al-Mulk. Wallahi, you know what I've thought of tonight? I don't know what the time's going to look like. At one point in this lecture, we're just going to stop, and we're all going to read Surah Yasin on our phones. If you don't have one, there's a Quran very close next to you somewhere, and then we'll continue with the program and make it as real as it can possibly be because we've just kind of fast-forwarded the grave, but the grave is where it happens. 
It either happens for the best or it happens for the worst. And when Uthman radiallahu anhu would pass by it, he would not cry sober so profusely on seeing, witnessing, encountering anything else as he would when he would pass by or hear of the grave. They asked him, Uthman, what's up? You don't cry like this over anything else. He said, This is the first stage, my friends. You make it here. You've made it. You are made man. You feel here. You're the biggest loser that ever walked this earth. I'm sorry to tell you this. Wallahi Allah is not having to retake an exam. Be it the M1 or the G1 or the G2. Or be it this exam, the MCAT or the bar exam. Wallahi this is not loss. Loss is the loss of the loser on the day of Qiyamah. So we get up from this sleep. Oh boy. And we're all being like cattle that are thirsty. Every single one of us is going to be gathered and collected on this day. Everybody's being gathered on this day. Every single one of us. All the angels and all the heavens are going to come down. This includes every single one of them from the first to the seventh sky, the seventh heaven. They're all going to come down in droves. And this roaring, raging beast of the fire of Jahannam is going to present itself. And then there's the gardens of Jannah. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ May Allah make us amongst them. I'm going to leave you with a sour taste in your mouth. You're not going to hear much about it tonight. Tonight is only part one and this is what it's about. So, here comes this blazing, raging, roaring beast of the fire of Jahannam. And it's been held, and it's been held from the time that Allah has created it. لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ 70,000 angels that hold it up. Excuse me, 70,000 chains that hold it up. And every one of these chains is held up by 70,000 angels. You do the math, is it 4.9 million angels that are holding this creation of Allah known as the fire of Jahannam? 4.9 million angels. Imagine what it's going to be like. Imagine those who are going to be made to suffer inside. The world has never seen the worst individual in terms of the most suffering, hardship, pain, agony that anybody has ever encountered and faced in this world. This person's torture compared to the smallest punishment and torture of the person that will be punished the least in Jahannam is almost again ten to mountain equal to nothing. That person who lived the best life, يُؤْتَى بِأَنْعُمِ أَهْلِ dunya On the day of Qiyamah, Allah will order that person who lived the best life in this world. Call it Bezos, call it, I don't know, Alexander, call it Musa Mensis, call whoever you want to call it, whoever it may have been, with the greatest amount of wealth, they lived the most luxurious life that the world has ever known. This person will be brought. Allah will order the angels to dip him once into the fire of Jahannam. He's not being given a tour. He's only being made to dip, dip once. And so this person who lived a life that was next to perfection, he's not seen any darkness or gloom throughout the course of his life. He's lived a life of a king's king. Call it what you want. This person will be brought. Not the average money Mayweather. No, this person will be brought. And what happens? Allah will tell the order. Allah will order the angels. Give him a dip, not a tour, just a dip. And so he'll be dipped into the fire of Jahannam just once, and then released. And Allah will ask him, "Hal marra bika naimun qattu? You lived the best life. Have you ever seen any goodness in your life?" The person will reply, Wallahi ma marra bi na'imun qattu. Wallahi, he'll take oath. I have never seen any goodness my entire life. But wait, you were only dipped in it once. What about the one who will be made to suffer therein? So Jibreel alayhi salam, 
Allah created Jahannam and told Jibreel alayhi salam, go check it out, Jibreel. So Jibreel saw it. And he said, he came back to Allah. Oh Allah, if anybody sees this, they're going to not want to be here. But he decorated it though. Allah decorated Jahannam. Around Jahannam was put all of the fancies and lusts and whims and desires, evils and vices and sins. All of this is that which surrounds the fire of Jahannam. Everything that a person wants to live a life, a life of his fancies and her fancies, but not the life of obedience to Allah. So this person, Allahu Akbar, Jibreel alayhi salam is then ordered by Allah, then go, go Jibreel, now check out what Jahannam's all about. At first she told me nobody's going to want to be there. And then when he saw all of that which Allah had decorated Jahannam with, he said, oh Allah, everybody's going to be here. If this is what it is, I mean, if this is what you need to land inside, oh, it's sad, but many are going to be doomed. And so that person that lands inside, what is the punishment of this person going to be like? Allah speaks about it in the Quran. لَهُمْ مِنْ جَهَنَّمَ مِهَادٌ وَمِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غَوَاشٍ from above this person is only fire. And from under this person is fire. This person will be made to wear clothes that are flammable, flammable clothing that sets him ablaze. It sets this person on fire. And what else does it do? And it causes this person's face to... Allah speaks about this elsewhere in the Holy Quran. They'll ask for water because of this blazing, roaring, raging fire of Jahannam. They'll get thirsty. I mean, you can imagine how thirsty these people are going to get. Allah said, They're going to ask for water. They're going to be given this water to drink. But with what? What kind of water is this? What putrid liquid is this that these people who had the audacity to disobey Allah, be it in the darkness of the night or in the broad daylight of the day, this person who had the audacity to disobey Allah, the king of all kings, he had the eyes that Allah had given him with which this person wanted to disobey him and the hands that Allah allowed him to mobilize, function and use, he wanted to disobey Allah, so now this person wants something to drink because he can't tolerate the fire of Jahannam. Allah says, sure, we're going to give you something. They'll be given such a water, such a, a liquid that will cause their faces to be roasted. Shawayashwi means to roast something. Like barbecue is roasted over the charcoal. That's what this person, just as a result of the water being brought close to him. And if this person were to sip on it, he'll try to sip. We've had bitter medicine in our life. We've had something that just couldn't go down. You needed it to block your nose. You needed to do whatever you possibly could to be able to tolerate the bitter taste or smell of whatever it is that we needed to consume. Allah said, what are we talking about? That which these people, the rebels, these those who revolted against Allah, they had the audacity to transgress and disobey Allah. They're going to try to sip and go. But it's not going to go down. It just won't go down. And when they finally do, when it does go down, it'll cause all of their insides and their intestines to come out from the rear passage. This is what the person will be given to drink. But they're going to get hungry, are they not? Rasulullah said about that tree that Allah spoke about in Surah Al-Dukhan. That tree, Zakum, is the food for the bad guy. He wanted to disobey Allah. He wanted to be classified as that group of people. Well, here you are and welcome to this food. What is it? Rasul sallallahu wa sallam said, لو أن قطرة من من الزقوم قطرت على أهل الدنيا لا أفسدت معائشهم. If a single drop of the sap of the tree of zakum were poured into this world, it would destroy the livelihood of every single living being. A single drop of the sap of the tree. 
Imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, فكيف بمن يكون طعامه? What about the person who will be made to eat from this tree? Its fruit resembles the heads of devils. And when it finally goes in, it will cause everything inside to be destroyed therein. This will be the food. And these people will need help, will they not? Imagine, Allah said, يُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ فَيَعْتَذِرُونَ Today, لَا يُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ فَيَعْتَذِرُونَ Are you people going to try to make excuses? Guess what? Your excuse is not going to be accepted. You're not going to be listened to. You're not going to be heard. Imagine, إِنْ يَسْفَرِخُوا They'll scream, لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ They'll bray like the braying of a donkey. Allah said this in the Quran. Yet these people will not be heard. These people will suffer. And then finally, once they realize, no matter what we do, we're stuck in this mess. Let us try to perhaps see, seek some help from the angel that Allah has appointed the guardian over the fire of Jahannam. And this angel's name is Malik. And in case you're not familiar with Malik, let me tell you a little bit about Malik. Become familiar now, so we don't have to become familiar then. May Allah save us. Malik is that angel, my friends. From the moment Allah created Jahannam, He has never once smiled again. From the moment Allah has appointed him, commissioned him with the task of guardianship over Jahannam, he has become completely desensitized to any sense whatsoever. He's got no sense, no feelings for no, nobody. No remorse, no regret, no shame, no dismay, no empathy, no sympathy. He feels no fear, no horror. This is that mighty angel about whom Allah said, عَلَيْهَا malaika غِلَاظٌ shidad." Allah has appointed angels over Jahannam. عَلَيْهَا تِسَعَةَ عَشَرَ 19 in number. The chief of all of these is the man named Malik. This angel who has never smiled. To what extent? When Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went up on Isra wal Mi'raj, he saw all of the angels. Every one of them greeted him and saluted him with a smile on their face. But Malik failed to do so. Imagine what Jahannam must be like. You just saw the pride of the universe, the paragon of Allah's creation. You weren't able to produce a smile for knowing what awaits the disbelieving man and woman. So this Malik will be called on for help. They'll say, Ya Malik! But what kind of help is it that the people of Jahannam are going to seek? Ask Allah on our behalf that we die. We don't want to be able to tolerate this and bear this and endure this any further. We seek and beg of you to ask Allah for our death and complete annihilation. What did Allah say? يَأْتِيهِ الْمَوْتُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِمَيِّتِ Wallahi, I don't know if you're going to sleep tonight and I'm sorry man. One person, one very reputable scholar said, I saw Jahannam in my dream on one occasion. For four months thereafter, I lost the sense of taste. I didn't enjoy eating. He saw Jahannam in his dream. I haven't seen Jahannam and probably won't lose my, I'm going to lose my voice, maybe not my sense of taste. Imagine what this must be like. So this angel's help will be sought by the people of Jahannam. For what? That we just be annihilated. Just let us not be any further. Because they saw it all. When the day of Qiyamah began, they already saw it. And they knew it was a reality. رَبَّنَا أَبْصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا إِنَّا مُقِنُونَ Oh Allah, we see it's true. It is, it is, it is. You know the brothers used to tell me, Shu'ayb used to come to beg me, please come to the masjid. Please don't just come to play ball. I haven't lost my, my mind. I'm not looking for a following on Instagram. Wallahi, I've studied this. Like all of the ulama that are sitting here, I've studied this. And this is all I fear. May Allah make me sincere in my words. I want not a single, let alone us. I wouldn't wish this for the worst of our enemies outside the house of Allah. This punishment and torment. Imagine asking Allah for your complete annihilation. And asking who? 
the one that Allah has given the power and the authority to keep Jahannam in check. Nobody's going to respond for a period of 1,000 years. Irai, I called you. You never picked up. I called you. I called you twice. You never picked up. I needed your help. And now you call me back. I'm fine. It's already been taken care of. It was only six hours later and I lost my mind. These people will wait for 1,000 years and not a reply to be given. And so what happens after 1,000 years though? A thousand years of them, though. A day there is like a thousand years here. Don't even bother doing the math anymore. A thousand years later, the response finally came. And what was it? You're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. What? Yeah. They're going to ask Malik, please, Malik. You responded and this was what you came back with. Okay, we understand we're stuck. There's no way we're going to get out of this mess. We're, we're, we're doomed forever and ever. Okay, would it be possible? Allah says this in the Quran, that these people will request Malik, the guardian of Jahannam, to ask Allah on their behalf, that they be given respite for one single day. You know, when you're admitted into the hospital and you know you're there for a long-term sickness, allow me on the day of Eid to go see my family, doctor. Allow me one day out of this mess, this raging, roaring fire of Jahannam. One day, ya Malik. Ask Allah to give us one day off. What does he reply with after 40 years again? I'm paraphrasing. For lack of better translation, shut your mouth and don't you speak. Yeah, it's going to be kind of harsh tonight, but we need it every once in a while, no? This is what awaits the bad guy. This is all we want. We ask you to come play in the masjid, but pray first. Come to visit Allah's house and frequent this house all the time just so we we're immune, we're granted emancipation and liberty, freedom from that fire of Jahannam. Umar ibn Khattab, we're going over time, I called it now. Uh, Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, 10 years after he left this world, 10 years, who? Umar ibn Khattab, appreciate and acknowledge the personality. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar. And if Allah were to question me on the day of judgment, Oh Abu Bakr, on what grounds did you appoint this man? I'll tell Allah myself, I've appointed the greatest human being on earth as my successor to the Khilafah. Abu Bakr will vouch for him on the day of Qiyamah. Said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لو كان بعدي نبيا نبيا لكان عمر If there were a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. Here he is. Ten years after he has left this world, and somebody sees Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn Khattab in a dream, and Umar is sweating, perspiring, and the man asks him, Amir al-Mu'minin, what happened? Ten years has gone by, and yet I still see you sweat like this. He says, he replies, ten years went by, he says, 10 years later, I finished giving account to Allah. And even then, had it not been Allah's mercy that He blanketed and covered me with, Umar would have been destroyed. Umar? Umar would have been destroyed. What do we have? He's about to leave this world. His lap. His head is in the lap of his son Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. His son is holding his Mubarak head in his lap. And Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar tells him, Abdullah, put my head on the ground. He says, Dad, no. I want to keep your head in my lap. He says, no. He says, I've heard the Prophet ﷺ say that an announcement, Nada munadim min as sama Yes, an announcement will be made on the day of Qiyamah. That if this announcement is made, that everybody will be saved from the fire of Jahannam 
except for one individual lakhiftu an akuna ana huwa i'm afraid oh abdullah that one individual that was doomed the fire of jahannam might just possibly be me put my head on the ground it doesn't deserve to stay in your lap at this time he says okay he carries out his order he says go to ummul mu'minin aisha radhiyallahu anha the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our mother, go to Aisha and request Aisha and tell her that Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu wants to be buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ma. This is his wish and his desire. Abdullah ibn Umar, his son, goes. He comes to Umm al-Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha and he begins to address her, saying, Umm al-Mu'minin. My father, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, has requested that the spot next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu be given to him and that's where he should be buried. Aisha radiallahu anha replies, she says, Marhaban bi Amir al-Mu'mineen. Welcome to him. For him, anything. She says, it was my heart's desire to be buried next to my father and my husband. But for Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar, anything. Abdullah ibn Umar is elated with joy. He goes back. He says, Dad, your wish has been granted. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, No, 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 no. Not yet. She may have only accepted the wish or accepted the request now because I'm Amir al Mu'mineen. After I die, Abdullah, you go back to her with the same request. But dare you use the title Amin al-Mu'mineen? The next time you go back, you tell her Umar ibn Khattab is requesting that he be buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, him, buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, he said, Oh Umar, if you were to come on the day of Qiyamah with the deeds of 70 of the Anbiya, even then you would fear the punishment of Allah. If you were to come on the day of Qiyamah with the deeds of 70 of the Anbiya, even then you would be fearful of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine my friends, what do we have to undergo this journey? If we're enjoying life, don't take this as a sign that things are good. Allah said, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah knows exactly what's happening. All the tyranny and oppression, all the disobedience and all the transgression. Allah knows all of this. Don't think that Allah doesn't see what's happening. إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Allah is only giving respite to these people. And we don't want to be amongst those people. Allah is only giving them time. Allow this opportunity. Enjoy life. Just keep going on like this. It's only respite. You're deceived. You're delusional, delusional again. You're thinking, oh, life's good. It's not good. You're living, you're living a life of disobedience. Allah's only giving you, it's called respite, till the day when eyes will be fixed and be dazzled out of the awe-inspiring fear of Allah. Muta'een, everybody will be running pell-mell. Muqni'ee ru'usihim, their eyes will be fixed, their necks will be raised, they, their, their eyesight will not return to them. لا يرتد إليهم طرفهم وفيدتهم هوا And their hearts are just lost, they're all over the place. That's a day that we need to prepare for. I know it's heavy tonight. It's okay. Let me tell you a little bit more about that day. It's a day when the sun will be wrapped like this turban around my head in darkness. The stars, they'll lose their brightness and fall. The mountains will be moved. You know, Aishar is that, that full-term pregnant she-camel. This was the commodity of the age for the Arabs. Even this will be neglected. Nobody cares about nobody or nothing on the day of Qiyamah. Everybody is lost in a worry and concern of their own. What do you and I have? And that's my message. I'm sorry, what do I have on that day to help rescue myself?
That is tonight's message. We all need, to, we, we all, I'm telling you, we all need to prepare for that day. Frankly, every single one of us, those with the white under their chin or nothing under their chin, every single one of us needs to prepare for that and everything which, which comes after. And that was tonight's message. And we're going to leave it at that. And inshallah, hopefully the next time we see you in this number, we'll tell you about the good place, i.e. Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare every single one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to do everything that saves us from Jahannam. Inspire us to do everything that will get us into the gardens of Jannah. May Allah keep every single one of us on the right path. May Allah bless us with the right company. May Allah make us obedient and respectful and kind to our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us enter into the gardens of Jannah without any reckoning. Without any reckoning. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. So uh, I think now uh, we've only gotten a few minutes over. We should be good. We're good. We can start with the... We can start with the registration. So if Brother Muhammad Ali is here, I'm not sure. Brother Muhammad Ali, he might be in the office. Uh, he can get us the, uh, the registration forms. And I know Sahban, I just saw him. Sahban, I thought I saw him. Also, the registration's downstairs. What do you say? Saman. Shaban. Oh, Sahban is down. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll do this in, in, in stages then. What we can start with then, that's Brother Nadim right there, the handsome one with the white thobe and the glasses and the blue mask. He's standing right at the door looking for himself. There he is. So you're going to go to him and you're going to get a ticket for the raffle to the Leafs game. So that's the first thing we can do. And then after that, we'll see how long that takes. And then we have dinner. The ulama, we can start downstairs, inshallah. We'll eat later. Jazakumullahu khairan.